Hey everyone, let's take a look at this problem from section 4.6 in Achieve. Uh, it's number seven. Given this uh, kind of strange looking function and your numbers here could be slightly different, I think they're both the same. And then on this strange interval from zero to two pi uh, over 17, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Um, we're to find all the transition points just on this interval, okay? Um, and 2 pi divided by 17, just for reference, um, did a little calculation here. 2 pi divided by 17 is about 0.3695, blah, blah, blah. So about 0.37 almost. So, I mean, that's the interval we're talking about. So very small interval, right? But this, when you take the sine of 17x, if you remember from your trigonometry, the, the, the graphs of the sine and cosine functions, this number 17 affects the uh, period or the um, frequency, right, of the, the graph. And so this number 17 actually makes there be a lot more ups and downs. You've got a 17x, which is a linear function. So you're going up with a slope of 17. And then the sine function is kind of bouncing back and forth very rapidly along, you know, that, that steep line. So that's kind of the idea. But we're just on this short, small interval, right, to zero to about 0.37. And so um, we're going to see, in fact, you can tell the, the, the period of this would be 2 pi divided by 17. So this is exactly one period for this sine function. That's probably why they have it on that, um, on that interval. OK, you can do the problem without that analysis. We're defining all the transition points on this interval. Transition points, again, are where we have um, a change from increasing to decreasing, decreasing to increasing, right? Any local extrema or any points of inflection. Okay, so to begin with, to talk, find the um, critical points, which could be transition points, right? We want to take the derivative, derivative of 17x is 17. And then here I have to use chain rule, derivative of sine is the cosine of 17x times the derivative of the inner function, derivative of 17x is 17. So there's my derivative. So this is never undefined, but it is zero, obviously, when uh, this, this thing will be equal to zero when 17 cosine of 17x is negative 17, right? If I subtract 17 from both sides uh, setting, after saying it equal to zero, divide by 17 gives me negative one. Now, when is cosine of 17x equal to negative one? Well, on the unit circle, right, so when the x coordinate is negative one, right back here. So that's going to be at pi. Um, since it's a multiple angle here, cosine of 17x, you got to think about, you know, going around multiple times, right? So pi plus any multiple of 2 pi. So pi, 3 pi, 5 pi. Of course, negative pi, we can even go in the negative direction. 17. But remember, this is not the value of x. This is the value of what we're taking the cosine of, which is 17x, right? So 17x is going to be pi plus any... Uh, multiple of 2 pi. So this n here is any integer. Okay, if you remember solving trig equations where you had to give all the solutions, right? You had to add this a lot of times, some uh, n times some multiple of pi. Um, dividing by 17, pi over 17 plus uh, uh, 2 pi divided by 17, and I put the n out here. So, you know, if n is 0, um, we get uh, just Pi over 17. So that's one solution. When n is uh, 1, if n is 1, I get pi over 17 plus 2 pi over 17. That's a total of 3 pi over 17. That's also going to make this derivative 0. But 3 pi over 17 is, is too big, right? We're stopping at 2 pi over 17. So um, that's not going to be good. And of course, if n is negative 1, we would get pi over 17 minus 2 pi over 17 is negative pi over 17, and negative values are not in this interval. So the only critical point is uh, only potential critical uh, transition point. Uh, it is a critical point, but the only potential transition point is pi over 17. So that's our critical point where the derivative is zero or undefined. Okay, now we want to find where the second derivative is zero because that's a potential uh, change in um, concavity, a uh, point of inflection. So let's take the derivative of our derivative. Derivative of 17 is 0. So I've got 17 times what? The derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then I have to multiply by another 17 by the chain rule. So I'm ending up with negative 17 squared here, or 289 sine of 17x. 
okay? So when is this second derivative equal to zero? Well, it's just one uh, term here and, and it's when sine of 17 X is zero. So when is sine equal to zero? Well, sine is zero, right? It's the Y coordinate on the unit circle at zero or at pi or in general, zero plus any multiple of pi. So just n times pi. So 17x, what we're taking the sign of, can be any multiple of pi. It could be zero, n is zero, it could be pi, it could be two pi, and so on. Dividing by 17 gives me the solution for x. x is any multiple of pi over 17. So when n is zero, I get zero. When n is one, I get pi over 17. When n is two, I get two pi over 17. All three of these are in that interval. If you remember, the interval is zero to, um, 2 pi over 17. So all of these are in the interval, but the endpoints, right, are 0 and 2 pi over 17. Even though the second derivative is 0 there, we can't have a change because we, we can't go less than 0. There, there's no change occurring because it's an endpoint. Same with 2 pi over 17. So even, the, even though these um, could be indeed uh, points of inflection for the function on its entire domain, on this interval, they, they cannot be because there are the endpoints. So pi over 17, again, is the only uh, potential, uh, I call it a critical point here, but really, you know, a, a potential transition point is what I want to say here. Um, so, um, so pi over 17 is the first derivative is zero and pi over 17, the second derivative is zero. So both the first and second derivative are zero there. Okay, so what's going on? Well, the only way you're going to tell what's going on then is to do a sign check on our first and second derivative. And that's what I've done down here. Um, this is our interval 0 to 2 pi over 17 and halfway is that pi over 17, which keeps coming up. Our first derivative, it's 0 there. Now, the interesting thing about the first derivative is everywhere else, the first derivative is going to be positive. And why is that? Let's go back to the first derivative. Here it is. You got 17 plus 17 times cosine of 17x. The smallest 17, uh, sorry, the smallest cosine of something can be is negative one, right? In fact, we know when it's negative one when when x is pi over 17, right? I mean, that's what we did over here. The derivative is going to be zero when set cosine of 17x is negative one. So the smallest the derivative could possibly be is zero, and that occurs at pi over 17. Right. Any other value of x on this interval, the derivative is going to be greater than zero, right? Because cosine x is going to be greater than negative one. And you'll have 17 plus something that is um, right, even, even if cosine is negative, say a half, uh, negative a half times 17 plus 17 is still going to be a positive result. So no matter what, this derivative is greater than zero. Um, on this interval. In fact, for this original function, remember this is one period of this function, its derivative is always greater than or equal to zero, being only equal to zero right at those, these the, the, the halfway point, so to speak, at pi over 17. So it's increasing really all the time. And as I said, you know, this is like 17x, which is a very steep line with just some up and down, but it's always going up. Okay, at any rate, since there's no change in sign in the first derivative, right, we're increasing all the way, there's neither a local max nor a local min. We'd have to go from positive to negative or negative to positive, right, to have one of those. So the function has no local extrema. Second derivative, though, if I check uh, a value of the second derivative that's less than pi over 17, notice the function is sine of 17x times a negative number here is, the, is our second derivative. So on the interval from zero um, to pi, um, you know, the sign is going to be positive on those intervals. And that's what's happening between zero and pi over 17, because basically uh, multiplying by 17, we're going from zero to what? 17 times pi over 17 is pi. So, you know, from zero to pi, the sign is going to be a positive number, but we're multiplying by a negative. And so we get a negative result. Um, similarly, from, you know, x going from pi 17th to 2 pi over 17, then the value of sine will always be negative. Negative times negative gives me a positive. Again, if you don't understand that reasoning, you can just pick a number, you know, just do pi over 17, which I did in my calculator, which is 0.184. Pick a number less than 0.184, you know, it's still positive, plug it into the second derivative, and you'll see that it indeed is negative. Okay, so you could do a sign check that way. 
But we do have a change in sign of the second derivative, which means there is a point of inflection at pi over 17. Okay, that's all the information actually I believe this problem is asking for, but it's important that you understand how you're going to show support on the test, which is going to be certainly a sign check. Um, I wanted to look at see what this function is um, looking like. Okay, so basically the shape of the graph from zero to pi over 17 is plus minus, which is increasing concave down, and then it's plus plus which is increasing concave up. And so that's the graph on the interval. I've sketched a graph with um, the Desmos grapher. I just want to show you that real quick in closing. And I've set up the Desmos grapher. So this is from zero to two pi over 17. And you can see right there, the first derivative is zero right there, right? That the, we have a horizontal tangent line right there. And that occurs at pi over 17, which I said was about 0.184, right? It's so about 0.184 right there in the middle. The derivative is zero, but it's not a local max or local min, right? We're increasing and then we're increasing, right? So there's a, sometimes we'll call the saddle point. We're not changing um, from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. Um, however, you do see a point of inflection because here we're concave down, see the frown portion, and then this part we're concave up. And, and there we have a, that point of inflection. Okay, so just a little analysis there. It's always helpful to graph with your calculator. This Desmos grapher, if you ever use it, it's free. It's a very nice way to visualize things, play around with it, and um, can be very helpful. Okay, hope this helps on this one.